Namaste. Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. <sighs> Magic LaCroix coming again at you with an important message. Um, hopefully this will be of some help or assistance to people. The What I want to talk about today is failing in the occult. Okay. The success of actual failure. And this will be my very last time talking about this particular subject because they did a study and grown-ups have the attention span of five minutes. I think it's less than that. But we got to understand that the occult, getting into the occult, is it's, it's a process. So, like I said, I want to address the success of failure. And that may seem like an oxymoron, but I'm going to, there's a method to my madness, and I'm going to explain that now. One of the things that I re, I've said on one of my videos before is that the master has failed more times than the beginner has ever tried. I thought I had a potential student not that long ago. She quit. She got mad because her spell didn't work. I'm like, well, did you see why it didn't work? Did you write down what exactly you did and then try it again? She was like, no, I'm in a bad mood. I'll talk to you later. And then I've never heard from her again. I'm like, you got to understand something. People who study the occult study for years, and I've said this before, the people who were in the ancient mystery systems of Egypt, they studied for years. Scientists studied for years. Doctors studied for years. Lawyers studied for years. You are not going to have success right off the bat like that. It's foolish to think so. Stop it. Stop being so impatient. That's how society has gotten us as a whole these days. We want everything like that. It's not going to happen like that. Now, let me tell you a story. My very first spell was successful. But what it made me realize is how magic worked, period. It was a spell that had me take a green candle. It was a very simple wicker spell. And this was in 1996 or 97. It was a, I had to take a green can and I had to take 10 silver dimes and place them in a circle around the candle. I had to say a chant and then I had to like concentrate on the candle's flame. Now that month, we got an excess of money that was already coming to us. But we didn't expect to get it. It wasn't a guarantee we were going to get it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What it did was move it in our favor. And that made me understand energy and magic and how it worked as a whole. So, don't think that just because my first spell was successful, that every other spell after that was also successful. It didn't happen that way. I have failed a lot of times. What I did, I went back to the drawing, drawing board. I went back to the drawing board, wrote down what I did, tweaked it, and then went back and tried it again. It didn't work. You're eventually going to get success if we just be patient about it. I'm seeing so many people who just ain't got the patience to, to learn this art. It's an art form. I don't know how many times I had to say this in how many videos. However... This is going to be my last time saying it because I, you, it's like people have a childlike mentality where if something doesn't work, then, oh, it must not work, period. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> you know, it magic works if you're willing to put an effort and understand things. And that's why I say the importance of reading and researching. I know many occultists who um, who channel information. They channel information. 
they get their information that way and they're very successful they're very powerful they're very potent but you got magic is so accessible on the internet you got all these internet gurus you got these these uh, easy bake spells that you find on online and then you think doing a spell and you're a master already. No. It doesn't work that way. Um, there are even some spells that have you call out certain deities. The thing about that is you don't know what the hell you're calling. You don't know what kind of energy it carries. So it can literally fuck you up by doing that. One of the first things I did when I started using the Kabbalah and the clip off. I researched, and that's why me personally, I like reading the old grimoires, the very old grimoires, because you'll find a lot of these uh, recent and uh, more modern magical books. They use they use the names of angels and demons from old. However, if you don't know that, you don't you'll get to, you will get taken advantage of if you don't know what the hell you're calling. That's why I say reading, researching, very important. I mean, what if you have the mindset of calling Satan? Satan carries a certain essence, a certain energy. It can make you really aggressive, make you obsessed with drugs or a sexual deviant, or something like that, if you don't know how to control that energy within yourself. Because when you are in invoking and evoking these energies, you, it merges with your astral body. So when it merges with your astral body, your personality will change. So we got to read, we got to research. One of the best investments I ever made, I just bought me a tablet. I was so against having a tablet because everybody else had one. But the thing is, what I use my tablet for, I have over 400 books on my tablet. So I carry all my grimoires with me all the time. And I love it because I can just think of something, I'll go to the book, there it is. I'm constantly researching. I'm constantly studying. 18 years into the occult, and some people, and I say this humbly, some people consider me a master, consider me a mage. I don't see myself that way because I'm still studying. I'm still reading. I'm still researching. We got to get back to that. We have to get back to that. Know what you're calling before you call it. Some of these energies, like I, I never understood while voodoo science used to tell me issue will fuck you up. First of all, when I first called him, he was aggressive. Very aggressive. Very aggressive deity. And I found that I was aggressive along with him. He showed up astrally, um, talking in an African dialect. That alone should tell you something right there. And it made me realize that this is what they're talking about. They ain't saying that issue is going to come He's going to come in, uh, in a puff of smoke and whip your ass like that. No, that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about they can fuck your mentality up and your personality. And you'll become aggressive for no damn reason. You'll become violent. You, that can happen. That's why they say Ishu or uh, Alehua or Ekshu or the Kimbanda system will fuck you up. That's what they mean by that. One of the ways that you can combat that is you can um, you can what's the word I'm trying to use? You can tweak your meditation skills. Meditation is not as hard as people make it out to be. It's not. It is it's simply focusing, quieting the mind. And I don't mean you always have to go into uh, a theta state or a delta state and concentrate like that. 
What I mean is sometimes early in the morning, when I'm doing, I have an hour drive to get to where I'm going. I'll play mantras. You know, I'll play Bobby Hemet lectures. And it got my mind thinking. It got my mind focused because I'm in that alpha state. And you're you're ready to receive things when you're in that alpha state. That's an hour long drive, you know. So meditation is not hard. It's a learned skill, yes. But anybody can do it. Anybody can learn to meditate. And while I'm on that subject, actually, let me backtrack. This may not be a great analogy, but it's a good analogy. You ever seen, I've seen this in the uh, the hood of Philadelphia growing up. You ever seen somebody who constantly get bullied, just constantly won't never fight back? One of the reasons they wouldn't fight back, we had a big ass Catholic church in my neighborhood, a big Catholic church. Well, you know what they teach you, turn the other cheek and... Um, you know, love thy enemy, which has got to be the stupidest goddamn thing I ever heard. Number one law of the universe is self-preservation. You are supposed to defend yourself. Anyway, back to this. Um, you ever see somebody constantly get bullied? They constantly get bullied. They won't fight back. They constantly get bullied. And then they fight back. That one time they had just had enough, they fight back and they kick ass. They learn that they have to fight. That No, not that they have to fight, but that they can fight. I've seen this happen. Somebody constantly get bullied, become not the bully of the neighborhood, but somebody who was feared because they actually knew how this dude knew how to use his hands when he put his mind to it. That's how you got to think about this. Six, you know, failure, 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 success. You will count, you will you will eventually succeed at these spells or at magic period. You just gotta work at it. You know, Bruce Lee wasn't always successful, and they won't tell you that. They even think that he just mastered. Bruce Lee was beaten once. I don't know his name right off the top of my head. It was a black guy that beat Bruce Lee. He is a master, and he beat Bruce Lee. You can Google that one. Um, but when I found out about that, I was shocked because, you know, all all the things they show about the documented documentaries about Bruce Lee and everything like that show him just being a master always. And it seems like, you know, that wasn't the case. <clears throat> the football coach. I know many people don't look at the NFL, but um, Bill Belichick, one of the most successful NFL coaches in NFL history. He's going to go down like that. He's He was a failure for the first six or seven seasons that he was in the league before he started. He failed before he became successful. You know, failure is only going to make you, it should make you more determined to succeed. Just got to keep at it. You get successful by failing. Yes, I can make things happen now, but I, it wasn't always that way. You know, so a lot of stuff that I've done has not come to fruition. And I had to, I either do another spell or find another system of magic to go to. And found success. I was constant, constantly, um, constantly tweaking what I did. You know, that's why I say the success of failure. It may sound like an oxymoron. It's really not because failure should make you uh, stronger. It makes you stronger in belief. It makes you strong in the mind. Meditation makes you stronger. Makes your mind stronger. Fake it till you make it. I know a lot of people have heard that particular term before. You walk around and 
You act like you're a master. In your mindset, you will eventually become a master. You'll become a mage. A mages. Don't think, like I said, don't think right off the back, you read something on the internet, you try it, and you're going to be successful. I'm not saying it's not, it can't happen, but a lot of people get into this mindset, oh, I can do anything because I read it on the internet. Really? Throw a pause. Seriously, you read a couple of spells off the, the internet and it's a quick fix for everything in your life. That's not going to happen. Either. What you can do, though, to get to that mind state, you can make, you can program your subconscious. This is more powerful than a conscious mind because when you're consciously awake during your everyday life, you're in a beta state. And it's very hard to program yourself in a beta state. What you can do is you get into a delta or a theta state. Deep concentration when you're alone. Or you can program your subconscious at night. You can say something and record it. You can say a, a positive reinforcement about anything and then... Listen to it at night. You have it on repeat. Listen to it at night. Your subconscious will get it. And then it will play out in your, your conscious world, for lack of a better term. So you can use a vision board. A vision board is a board where, I mean, images are everything. They really are. You can make a vision board with money, houses, how you want, how you see yourself, or how you want things to manifest in your life. You can do that. Um, you can look into your eyes in the mirror for about five minutes and repeat a mantra to yourself while looking directly at yourself. You'd be surprised at how how effective that little technique is. And Pay attention to your totems. You know, there are reasons why certain uh, animals may show up. There was a frog, a little frog about that big, in my office. In no way, shape, or form can a frog even get into my house. You know what a frog totem is? It signifies transformation and good things happen. I've seen spiders. <laughs> I've seen just these these birds that I've never seen before. These are signs that you need to pay attention to. Program your subconscious. Don't be afraid to fail. It's natural to fail. You're not going to be successful right off the bat with the. I'm I'm not, and I don't want you to take this like say, oh, since I've been in this for so long. That's why I'm so successful. You're not going to be. That's not what I'm saying. It's not. What I'm saying that it's okay to fail. It become. It makes you more. It strengthens your resolve. Makes you become more successful at what you're doing. So hopefully this little video has been of some help to some people. I said I was going to stop giving y'all spells, but I'm going to give you one. And this is called a money doll. And what you do is you buy a cloth doll or make or you make one of green cloth. You stuff the doll with comfrey, king fern, and king's root. Any botanica will have these, um, these items that you can buy. And on a piece of parchment paper, it's always parchment paper, or you can use a brown paper bag, which they, you know, uh, parents use for their kids' lunch. You write the following. You say, great secretary of the universe. I'm sorry. 
Great Secretary of the Treasury, Treasury, I implore you to grant me the sum of, and whatever you need, I am in desperate need of it. I require this amount and so spare to meet my needs. You sign the parchment paper, you place it inside the doll, and you sew up the doll with green thread. Remember, green's the color of success and money. You anoint the doll's hands and feet with fast luck oil, King Midas oil. You wrap the doll in green cloth and just you anoint it on a daily basis. Okay, so when you get that money that you're going to get or that you ask for, you burn a doll in an incense burner with high power incense. That's the name of the incense. And just remember, when you get money through magical means, you are to share that money. That ensures that the money keeps coming back to you. Nothing wrong with failure. Keep failing. It's only going to make you successful. This is Magic Choir. I hope I've been of some help to you. Thanks for watching. Namaste. The divine in me greets the divine in you. Peace and blessings.